So in this video what we will uh, learn is how to compute the sample size for proportions when we want to do a test on two proportions. So we will start with the Fisher's exact test and we will see that the calculations are pretty complicated and then we will move on to some approximations or when we want to show that the risk ratio or the odds ratio are different in both groups. Okay, so let's start with the Fisher exact test. So um, let's say that we are developing a new surgery procedure and we think that uh, this procedure reduces the proportion of recurrent tum tumors uh, two years after operation. So how many samples do we need to analyze to show this statement when we expect that uh, P1, so the pro uh, probability of recurrent tumor with the first uh, uh, with our new method is is 10% and with the old method is 20% and we want to have a, a confidence um, level of 95% and a statistical power 90 so uh, this statistical power applies to if this uh, the, the difference is this much then we already want to have this 90% of, of of statistical power so we need now to find sample size in each one of the groups in one and in two and two critical values x1 and x2 for this comparison so yeah I, uh, calculations are a bit different so here we have a, a, a function that uh, depends, uh, this P depends on X1, X2, and 1 and N2. And we recognize here a kind of uh, hypergeometric distribution. We have the binomial here, we have the, this binomial, we have this uh, indicator function, and this indicator function will be 1 if P is smaller than alpha and 0 otherwise. And you need to find numbers such that this thing is smaller than 1 than alpha and and then this equation here that looks really complicated is smaller than beta and you, you would solve these for x1 x2 and 1 and n2 so yeah uh, we will not enter into the so, uh, solution uh, numerical calculation of the solution for that you have computers but let's study the kind of results we get so let's say that we force n1 to be equal to n2 then x1 is 0 x2 is 5 so this follows the general philosophy that you need to find n and the critical values such that from that value to the left you have a, a beta to from that value to the right you have alpha so uh, what these numbers mean what do these numbers mean so it means that you will study 232 patients with the old technique P2, that is uh, uh, around 20% uh, uh, of the, those patients will have a recurrent tumor. And 232 with the new technique. So there are two groups, each one of 232 patients. We would reject an, an hypothesis that they perform equally if we find zero uh, in the new technique and five or more in the old one. And for other observed values of x1 and x2, you would need to compute this thing here and compare it to the to the uh, threshold, this 5% threshold. Okay, so uh, we all agree that those calculations look like complicated. So let's see if there are some approximations. The first one is the normal approximation. The normal approximation is fulfilled when n1 p1 is larger than 5 and 1 times 1 minus p1 is also larger than 5 and the same the same for the second group then if that uh, fulfills then we can compute this difference as the difference between the two proportions we know how to calculate the, the variance of this difference that is this one and uh, this p hat is this uh, uh, weighted average between the two and then uh, we can calculate the sample size and here we have the, the formula if both groups are equal so we see that if they follow 
the general rule. So a term depending on the confidence interval and the confidence level, a term depending on the statistical power, and then a normalized effect size. And then in this case, uh, the, the effect size is 0 0.2 minus 0 0.1. Um, this uh, average between the two uh, weighted average, because the both groups will have the same size, the weights are, it is just an average, so it is 0 0.15, and then we can calculate we have n equal 56. But we can compare to the to the uh, previous one that we had, and we had 232. So in this in this case, uh, uh, we are not fulfilling the the Gaussian approximation. Okay, what about the arc sign approximation? So the arc sign approximation, uh, the Gaussian approximation is, is problematic when the distribution of P is skewed. So uh, this distribution here, so P hat, uh, maybe the distribution of it may be skewed, may not follow a Gaussian distribution. This normally happens when you are in the extremes, and this P1, P2 are already quite in the extremes. That is why uh, we don't have a, a good approximation by the Gaussian. So uh, now, uh, instead of analyzing p, we can uh, analyze the arc sine of the square root of p, whose variance is this one. And then, again, we follow the standard uh, uh, formula for the sample size calculation in the, uh, for Gaussian variables. And now, uh, this uh, this approximation we see that it is much better. So the first one, the exact solution was 232, and and we see that this one is also in that uh, order of magnitude. Okay, so what if we want to uh, uh, make this design, but based on the risk ratio, the risk ratio. It was this equation 17 that we had it here. So equation 17. Yeah, this is the risk ratio. That is the uh, the uh, ratio between P1 and P2. So let us go back to our risk ratio method. So uh, again, we see that uh, we have uh, a kind of similar formula. That is a, a confidence level plus a statistical power divided by a, a normalized effect size. So uh, if uh, both groups have the same size, then R is equal 1, and then uh, the risk ratio is 0 0.5, and then we have a pretty good approximation, actually. And then with the odds ratio, with the odds ratio, uh, that again, we had the uh, defined before it was p1 divided my uh, 1 minus p1 and all that divided by p2 divided by 1 minus p2 so this risk ratio the odds ratio here it is uh, 0 0.4 you see p1 divided by 1 minus p1 p2 divided by 1 minus p2 and and then the sample size is is uh, again very good approximation to the to the uh, correct sample size. So the Fisher's exact test, the Fisher's that was here, the calculations are uh, pretty hard to, to perform, and we need to find this x1, x2, so the critical values, and then one and two. But just for the sample size, uh, the sample size can be relatively easily calculated if uh, any of these approximations uh, are uh, valid. So a, a possible procedure would be you first try with approximations and then uh, you compute a few of them so you see that 56 is pretty separated from 200, this is 232, this is 227. So with the three approximations, with the four approximations, uh, you see that most uh, we have four approximations here. So these three are in the order of 200. This one is in the order of 56. 
and it is because the, the distribution is very skewed and this happens when you go to the extremes of the of the of of the proportions or very low proportions or very high proportions and then uh, these other methods are much, much better to approximate the Fisher's exact test so this would be all for this uh, for this kind of designs and, and uh, in the next video we will see these more advanced uh, uh, procedures.